Dr. Winnie King and welcome to Keeping Kids Healthy. This is a program about your children's health and it comes to you from the lobby of the Children's Hospital at Montefiore Medical Center in the Bronx. So you may see some people walking by or hear some noise in the background, but the real action is going to be right here on the set. Today you're going to meet some kids who are dealing with a painful disease that you may not even realize they have. It's called sickle cell disease, and the more you know about it, the more you can help them ease not just the physical, but also the psychological pain that they have to endure. Over 70,000 Americans, including thousands of children, have sickle cell disease. Because of it, their legs sometimes hurt too much to walk, or their arms hurt so badly they can't use them. The pain is said to be the most intense in medicine, and our lack of understanding of that pain can hurt the people who have to endure it. In a few minutes, you'll meet six teenagers who will tell you what it's like to live with this disease. But first, let me introduce three experts who can explain what sickle cell patients are dealing with. Please welcome our special guest. We have Dr. Judy Marcus. And uh, Dr. Marcus is a pediatric hematologist and oncologist. And we have uh, Tunya Harris and Stephanie Lutz. And they are a team of certified social workers who specialize in pediatric hematology and oncology patients. And within that realm, fall children, teenagers with sickle cell disease. Um, Dr. Marcus, let's start with you first. Explain to us exactly who gets sickle cell disease and why. Sickle cell is an inherited disease that's genetic. And um, you need both parents to carry the gene for the sickle cell disease. Mm -hmm. And so the child then inherits it and it's present since birth. Right. It's not something that you catch. It's not something words. you catch, it's not contagious. It's something yeah. that you, that's part of your being a person. Well, to help explain what's going on, let's take a look at a clip that explains exactly what happens to those red blood cells when you have sickle cell disease. Red blood cells are normally round and soft so they can squeeze through tiny blood vessels. But in people with sickle cell disease, these cells can change shape and become stiff and pointed. Now, when that happens, the cells can clog the blood vessels. And what that does is cut off the supply of oxygen and damage nearby tissue. Now, Dr. Marcus, when this clogging happens, a patient experiences what's called a painful crisis. Tell us about that. What does that mean? Well, when you just heard from the clip, the oxygen doesn't get to the tissues, so the cells slowly die. And it's, it's the kind of pain that's similar to the pain that people having a heart attack have when there's not enough oxygen getting to the heart muscle. So it's a very intense pain um, and can be in the bones, can be in the muscles, can be anywhere where the, that tissue is blocked by the sickling cells. And let's talk a bit about how we treat this because the pain is so very intense and I've treated many patients with this too and it's really startling how painful this is. What do we use for treatment? When the painful crisis happens and the, and the children and teenagers are in great pain, we have to use narcotic or opiates to be able to treat that. So we're talking about morphine, we're talking about oxycodone, we're talking about very um, high-powered drugs, which, um, as you know, have other side effects. And um, unfortunately, sometimes uh, doctors are reluctant to use those drugs because they're afraid that the, the patients will become addicted to them. But in fact, you need to use those drugs because otherwise the patients will be suffering much too much. Yeah. Well, Tunya, you um, talk about sickle cell disease as a disease that affects the lives of the patients and the patients' lives also affect the disease. Tell us about that. Well, generally what happens is um, sickle cell disease is, uh, oftentimes can be brought on by stress. And if life is stressful, um, the pain becomes more and more um, exemplified. Mm -hmm. Not that it wasn't there before, but more and more. So it's sort exemplified. of a circle. It kind of yes. goes round and round. Yes. And Stephanie, you found that a lot of uh, teenagers tell you that people don't really appreciate just how much pain they're in. And sometimes their friends even kind of push them away a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I really admire the, the children that I've met that have sickle cell disease. I think they're really amazing children because they're constantly in the hospital and they have to deal with so much but a lot of times their friends and family don't even understand what they're going through in terms of the pain, in terms of missing out on things in life, and it can be very difficult for them. Mm -hmm. Tunya, you ask a very interesting question. 
to these kids. And I mean, you guys are the team. I mean, you relate to these kids. All of you guys deal with them on a regular basis. They know you, they love you, they trust you. And you ask some really pointed questions. And one question in particular that you ask is the miracle question. And what exactly do you ask? What's the miracle question? What I ask is, if you went to sleep last night, just tonight, and a miracle was to occur, what would be that a miracle? Wow. And then they can tell me what they want to change in their life or what they want to change regarding their medical or whatever the case may be. So what kinds of things do these kids want to change? Oh boy, they want to get rid of sickle cell disease. Yeah. I would think that would be the number one thing. That would be the number one, but also if they have to have it, they want people to understand mm -hmm. what sickle cell is. Um, help them to un help they want others to know that when they're in pain, they're really in pain, and they're not playing. They, yeah. don't, wanna, they don't want medicine just for the heck of it, and they don't want to be in the hospital just for the heck of it. Well, Stephanie, how do these kids cope with being in the hospital so much? That's hard for anybody at any age. Well, I think they, they do their best to continue with life, and when you meet the teenagers, you'll see that they really try hard to lead a normal life, to, to be normal kids, normal teenagers, and go through their life, have friends, go yeah. out. Um, have those experiences that teenagers have. Sure. But the, d the difficulty is the intrusion all the time of the illness. Absolutely. I want to thank you all so much for being on the show. Judy and Stephanie and Tunia, we really appreciate it. Now, here are two organizations that you can contact to find out how you can help. And we'll be back in just a moment to meet those teens who are living with sickle cell disease. Now to our special guests, the teens who this show is all about. I want you to meet our special guests. We have Rashawn Robinson, we have Dina Valentine, Shaquana McDuffie, Teresa Taylor, Vanessa Adams, and Carla Brown. And welcome all of you guys to the show. I'm glad you're here. Shaquana, let's start with you. What's your everyday life like being a patient with sickle cell disease? What's it like? Well, it's difficult for me because, you know, like people don't know how I feel and they judge me all the time because like I'm in school a lot and they don't they don't know they say a lot of things and it's hard for me it's really hard for me they can't believe that you're out of school because you're sick yeah they don't know so they say whatever they think like I was out for a month and a half and I went back and it was like I thought you died and this and that whatever like I that. thought you died yeah that's what I said <laughs> why would I die jump over the face of the earth no wow. Reason. Now, this whole thing about missing school is a big problem with sickle cell disease because you do miss a lot of school. Yeah. How does that impact you at school? Because right now, like, I'm not passing, so I'm failing for the term in my sophomore year, so I'm not passing, I'm failing again. So I have to take the whole semester all over again. So it's real hard for me to keep up in school, a lot of things. Wow, so even though you're doing well in school, it's that you're just missing the days? It's, I'm missing days, and when two days equal absence, so it's difficult for me to catch up and they like some of my teachers don't know so it's so hard for me to tell them and oh, to wow. be there to catch up on my work and it's hard for me to catch up for work because once I'm catching up again I'm in the hospital again. Carla the pain of a sickle cell crisis is supposed to be very very horrible describe it for us what's it like? Well it's, it's hard to describe it but for, for, for me I know it's like sometimes a squeezing pain pinching pain it, it's, it really hurts and it's hard to, to, to say exactly what you're feeling but you just know it's intense mm -hmm. and sometimes it's like cramps in your joints and and I get a lot in my spine so it's like it's always it's squeezing a lot but unless you actually have this or you take care of someone who has this some, a lot of people don't realize yeah. that you're having so much pain tell us about that what, do you have a hard time getting people to believe you yeah it's painful very painful like yeah how about you, Rashawn? Yeah, sometimes they like, the doctors like kick us out. And he, when we be in crisis, we like, it's not time for us to leave because we're still in pain. And they be like, oh, you could, we, they, they like, they give us medicine by mouth. And they, that's how, we, like, that's a warning for us. Like, it's time for us, they, like, they're oh. kicking us out. So you're talking about when you're in the hospital as a patient yeah. having a crisis, they've got the IVs in your arms, yeah. they're giving you the pain medicine, sometimes morphine, things yeah. like that, IV, and yeah. then they start to sort of taper you off of the yeah. IVs and start giving you medicine by, by mouth. mouth. Yeah, I yeah. Think. And that's usually when they're kind of getting ready to yeah, cut you so loose, yeah. even though you're not quite ready yeah. to go. Yeah, yeah I think what they need to understand is that we've been going through this because mm -hmm. we were born with it. So now when we're like teenagers, I think we understand how our body is and what kind of pain you feel, what kind of pain you feel and you should know when you're ready to get off the morphine mm -hmm. and when you need mouth <coughs> medicine. So. Right. so they just actually say, because you're on medicine by mouth, yeah. 
that means that you can go home well, now? Well, actually, yeah. they do that according to how you look in bed. Oh, really? Sometimes. So even though you're feeling better sometimes with the pain, it's you can pain. tell that it's going to come back. Yeah. 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 So there's a big difference between taking medicine by mouth or getting the IV. Yeah. And so yeah. you know that the medicine by mouth sometimes doesn't quite get it for you. Yeah. And so what, what's, what kind of experiences have you had, Teresa, with that? Have you had people tell you, oh, you're just, you're just playing, there's nothing wrong yeah, with you? Yeah, like a lot of, like the doctors, um, yeah, you, I seen you walking around. Yeah, you ready to go home. Mm -hmm. You don't have any more pain. Your numbers went down. It's time for you to go home on medication by mouth. Yeah. But yet later, I'm back in the hospital the same night. Wow, the that was really exactly. making you angry, you know, yeah. because it's like nobody's listening. Well, how would you want people to treat you? I mean, you've got, you know, your school teachers, you've got your friends, you've got doctors and, and nurses. Tell us, what would you like, if you could talk to them right now, what would you want them to say? I just want people to understand that we're not, we're, we're normal human beings just like the rest of y'all. It's just that we have sickle cell problems. Mm -hmm. It's not like you can catch it. Right. It's something a way God intended us to be one of his special kids. Mm -hmm. And people that don't know what it is, they, you know, take it upon themselves to assume things that's not right about us. And if I could tell somebody this, I would say, you know, let us be. We human just like you. Mm -hmm. Let us live our life just yeah. like you live yours and don't judge us for something we have that we can't control. Yeah. Dina, what has having sickle cell done for you in terms of learning to cope? I mean, how, how have you learned to deal with this disease? Well, you take it one day at a time. One day at a time, like, if you get pain, you take your medicine, or you go to the hospital if it's that bad. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, you just keep on going yeah. through life. Do you ever have days, uh, Vanessa, when you are really down, when you're just like completely over this, and you just want this to just go away? No, I'm never discouraged, because I think I'm the same as everybody else. Mm -hmm. People used to treat me like, don't do anything because you'll die and stuff. And I do a whole lot of activities at school because I want to prove that just because you're sick don't mean you can't do much because I do a whole lot, very much. Now, having this disease requires you to take medications, right? Yes. You have to take medicines on a regular yeah. basis. Yeah. Now, I see yeah. you all nodding yeah. your head yes, yeah. but I know some of you told medicines. me that you don't take your medicines. Um, do, are you good about it or is it hard to take it every day? Be forgetting. No, sometimes yeah. I forget mine. Yeah. Sometimes you get tired, so you try to forget, so you sort of feel better. Because everybody here, I think everybody takes hydroxyria. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I stopped taking that. And it's big, and you, you just don't want it sometimes. Yeah. Get on purpose. <laughs> what, have you, what have you guys learned, though? I mean, you're, you're young people, and you're having to deal with pain and the hospital and disease and illness at an age when most kids your age really don't have to deal with this kind of stuff. You know, what has, what has it taught you about life in general? Do you have any, any different way of looking at life that you think maybe your friends that don't have sickle cell you can't plan, don't have? You can't plan nothing because so you, you'll yeah. get sick. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. you got to just live life yeah. like you live life regularly. You can't, you know, expect just because you have this, you can't do it. You, can't, you just got to plan it, not really plan it, but, you know, live it. You got to do what you got to do to keep yourself healthy so you can live life. That's all you can do. It's not going to go away. It's something that's not have a cure for. So you just got to do what you do, take your medicine, whatever you do to keep yourself well and out of the hospital. I think for me with that, it's like with the pain and not, and not knowing when it's going to happen, you yeah. kind of just enjoy every day, like, you may be feeling good today, so you put on your little skirt and yeah. whatever, and you go outside and you have fun. Because you don't tomorrow. know if, you know, tomorrow the weather's going to change yeah. or something's going to hurt yeah. to where you can't do what you want to do. So you just enjoy. I think a lot of people tend to plan and, and say, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. But what I've learned this past year is that you can't make any plans because you don't know what's going to happen. So you just got to enjoy every day that you have. Yeah. Like every day is your last day. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, that's so well said, and I know all of you feel the same way. You know, it's just you want people to respect you and to understand exactly what it is that you're going through. I want to thank you guys so much for being here on the show. We really, really appreciate it. You're all fabulous, and as far as I'm concerned, you're all stars. Now, um, this is a show that is designed to give people information about children and some of the issues that they're going through, and we're grateful that you're here. And thank you all so much for watching the show. I'm Dr. Winnie King, and we will see you next time on Keeping Kids Healthy. Bye-bye, everybody.